Welcome to All Things Moore County, Moore County's weekly radio show highlighting the many facets of the Sand Hills. That includes real estate, lifestyle, community, and neighborhoods. And now from four properties, here's your host, Bill Sahadi. Good morning. Welcome to the uh, talk show, All Things Moore County. Uh, Dorothy, we have um, two very distinctive guests today. Um, we're going to go from one extreme to the other. Um, but interestingly enough, our second guest is a big supporter of our first guest. Well, that's good. Uh, who is Jeff Hastings. He is the uh, currently the chaplain at St. Joseph's. Um, Jeff has a story to tell. And it was also told very well in a recent article in the Pinehurst Gazette written by Rebecca King. Um, it's called the Warrior 180 Foundation. And it is one of their, um, their bylines is because not all wounds are visible. And um, Jeff, um, y this is more of a, the Warrior 180 Foundation is more of a calling to you? Yes, sir. As opposed to something that you set out to, to do as a career. It's not about that. It, Warrior 180 Foundation chose me. Okay. I didn't choose Warrior 180 Foundation. H how did they choose you from, obviously, from some of your experiences? You have a, quite a story to tell. Um You know, uh, on, a, on a typical day, I'll meet a veteran or a, a, a first responder who is having trouble. Um, most people walk by and, and don't notice the person. Um, and, and like our tagline says, not all wounds are visible. Uh, the person from the outside looks, looks fine, looks normal. They're okay. But if you spend some time and you listen to them and you get to know them, the wounds start to appear. And, and that's, um, I started seeing those, first of all, in myself and then in folks around me. And uh, I had to do something to help these folks. Tell me about your experience yourself in the military? I didn't join the Army until I was 46 years old. So uh, being in the military is usually a, a young man's game. Uh, my wife laughed when I said that I felt led to join the Army, and she said uh, she knew I wasn't going to pass all the requirements, so it was no big deal. Well, uh, I did, and... Two months after coming home from Chaplain Basic at Fort Jackson, South Carolina, I was contacted by a lieutenant colonel whose battalion was going to Iraq, and uh, he wanted me to go with him. So you served in the military as a chaplain? Yes, sir. So you saw a lot in your, how many years? Eight years. Not only did you see a lot, but you mentioned, and it's mentioned in the article, about your son, Logan, who today I think is 36 years old. Yes, sir. Can you tell me a little bit about um, his tie-in to the... Because you started the foundation, I think, in 2015. Yes. Okay. Um, Logan joined the Army before I did, which is kind of different as far as families goes. And a lot of people think that was the reason I joined because of his involvement. It had some to do, but um, it just opened the door wider. Uh, L Logan, when he was in Iraq, would call home at, at different times, sometimes in the middle of the night and having trouble himself. And then other times he would call home and say, hey, Dad, I've got a buddy here who needs some help. Would you help him? And so I was already doing chaplain things with soldiers even before Warrior 180 started. Your son was, <clears throat> your son was also a victim of the wars, and t to this day. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, Logan um, was hit by a, a, a large IED in Afghanistan. 
he was driving a D9 bulldozer and it flipped it and rolled it. And um, he, he struggles today and he'll, he'll admit that. Uh, to w- One of the things that brought healing for Logan and myself in 2017, he and I kayaked the entire length of the Mississippi River. It's crazy. To bring awareness to veteran suicide and, and to try to wake up folks to the need. And uh, when he asked me if I would do this with him, I said, well, Logan, I've never kayaked. He said, Dad, either have I, but I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos, and I think, you know, this would be great. Um, it, it, it was life-changing for both of us to be able to spend that time together. Yeah. Um, how, do you, how do you know, or how can you sense if, if um, a veteran that you speak with um, may show tendencies towards being suicidal? Um, I'm a people watcher and, uh, watch their body language. You know, when we communicate, only 30% is words. So the eyes speak a lot. Right. Um, watch the body language. But then there are, are also signs, uh, that, that anyone can, can watch and be aware if somebody is suicidal. And those things um, might be things such as somebody talking about wanting to die, somebody uh, giving away prized possessions, uh, changing in sleep patterns or habits. Either they're sleeping significantly longer or significantly shorter. Um, Someone who stops taking care of themselves. Um someone developing a sense of helplessness and hopelessness. And really those are the, the biggest red flags. If you see that in somebody, uh, that, that might be the, the biggest sign that they might be pondering suicide. And you recognize depression in, in a similar way? Yes. Observing, yes. eye contact. Yes. Um, because people are very good at disguising aren't they <laughs> yes they are i mean they they want to present what they want you to see yeah you have to be able to see through it and and really uh the goal for warrior 180 foundation and for us for more county yeah is that we would have number one a place for veterans military and first responders and their families to come and connect with one another and encourage one another and support each other. And then number two, a place for our community to come and, and partner together in, in, in such a powerful way to help change the lives of, of these folks. So the services that the foundation provides is counseling? Yes, a, a place to for fellowship. Yeah, we uh, we don't have that place currently. Okay, we're, we're working on that. Okay, and um, but that's that's hope hopefully soon. Our goal that that will open up. How do um, how do you raise funds? Um, Pri- all privately. Yes, by the by the goodness of people's hearts. Who who, you know, a lot of it is they've experienced it themselves or they've seen it in their son or daughter or um, their neighbor. And, you know, hopefully for us, um, we want to get to people before it's too late as opposed to uh, sometimes we come afterwards. And when you say before it's too late, are you referring primarily to suicide? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, your flyer is very intuitive. Um, you've got uh, suicide intervention training. Um, you cite some unbelievable statistics. Suicide across the U.S. is the tenth leading cause of death. Yes. I wonder what percentage of of that would be uh, mili- people who have served. Um, mili- veterans and military, uh, their suicide rate is double hmm. the the average in 2019. There were 47,000 suicides from 10 years old to 34 years old, the second leading cause of death. Not military, just general population 
from 10 years old right. is suicide Jeez. to 34. You would think our, our communities would just be, hey, finances isn't a problem. We got this taken care of. We're, but that doesn't happen. So how are you, how is a foundation different than some of the veteran um, businesses that have popped up that provide, you know, financial counseling, getting back into the job market, um, trying to get people to um, reset and move forward? Yeah, and, and just to be clear, we partner with a lot of those organizations okay. and support those organizations because we provide things they don't provide and they provide things we don't provide. Uh, how are we different? We are a, a Christ-centered, uh, we're a Christian uh, nonprofit organization. How is that different? Uh, for us, it's the, it's the hope of, of Jesus that we can offer to people uh, the reality that God himself uh, has walked with them in the midst of life and through battle and is walking with them and carrying them through them and and w- will continue to um, that's a big part of what we do is walking with folks through the muck and the mire okay. Rebecca um, told a beautiful I mean she told a story that flows and ties it all in together um, she talks about there was a time uh, there was a lady, um, uh, you were standing in line, I guess, at a, at a store, mm-hmm. and she kind of lost it because they were either short of toilet tissue, and she kind of went off, but you said, so did you. I, I was standing behind her uh-huh. and heard the whole conversation. It was at Walmart, and this was when we lived in Kentucky. I had just come home from Iraq, and um, huh. I, I lost it because, you know, I, I thought of what we went through, Right. and this lady's complaining about toilet paper, and wait a minute, D- don't you get it, don't you get it, and I, I, I lost it, and... I went home and and I said, "Honey, I, I have a problem." Uh, you came in today. Um, you have a service dog with you. Yes. Um, and I asked you why. Can you talk? Yeah, about I that? I said uh, PTSD. Yep. Um, for, for me, as the chaplain, uh, some of the struggles I have, it's it's. Um, Some of my friends who uh, took their life, right, and the guilt that I struggle with, right, that maybe if I would have just said the right thing, right, they would be here today, right. Um, your wife is she involved in the foundation with oh, you? Oh yeah, she uh, she does all the the background kind of stuff, yeah. makes me look good. Th- is that this right? kind of she, stuff. She yeah. does a good job. Yeah. Um, you also talk about um, where there are suicides. Sometimes people uh, and the family, the members, don't talk about it, and they don't reveal it. They they refer maybe somebody passed suddenly, and you look at the obituaries, and you look in between the lines sometimes. Um, so there's a stigma that, that you have to overcome. Yeah, and we, we want to help defeat that stigma right he, th- this is home for us more county is home for us now and right. we want to help uh, those who are struggling in more county and 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 you know what we get calls from folks who aren't military they're not veterans they're not first responders their family has nothing to do with that and we don't turn them away uh, we still help them uh, and and we want to help that kind of issue uh, you know right now, kids, children, and the area of suicide. Uh, We went to a place in Ohio and spoke to um, 12 schools in in three days. Um, We did school assemblies, and and out of the woodwork, these kids were coming who were struggling with thoughts of suicide. 
we live in a show me society. We live in a, a society that puts a lot of everyone gets on social media. They want to look good to the world. They want to present themselves in such a way. And um, it's hard sometimes to break those barriers, right, for people uh, of that mindset who want to, um, th they're aware of the issue, but they don't get overly involved. They almost don't want to, they want to almost pretend it's not there, yeah. right? Yeah. You see to get that a lot. Yeah. Um, so you are in a fundraising mode uh, donations because you are trying to locate a facility uh, as as a the home of 180 fit right um, have you been successful piecemeal are you are you running into uh, challenges you didn't expect challenges we didn't expect everybody i meet and and i tell them about you know what we do they always say wow that's such a great need, such right. great need. Right. And then they turn and right. and walk away and and I think, well, wait a minute. If it's such a great need, yeah. Why why are you walking away? And and, and I'm not saying, you know, um uh, whatever, but if it's such a great need, search your heart and do something. What it, whatever it is, and I know there are folks out there who do a lot to support our, our military and our veterans. And even, you know, uh, some of the trainings that we provide, it's helping people to understand. One of them is just understanding the military culture. Uh, hey, I, I, maybe I've got veterans or military or first responder neighbors, and maybe I can just reach out to get to know them and and invite them over for, you know, a meal and just listen. And connect. Just befriend them and, you know, and just that kind of simple thing might open doors where down the road they may say, hey, you know what? Mm -hmm. you remember that day you invited us over? You might not know it, but you changed my life. Just by listening to me. Okay, here's a tough question. <clears throat> In your opinion, has the VA done or provided uh, and fulfill? Are they? Is it fulfilling their purpose in a meaningful way that that makes a difference, or is it something you have to sidestep and go off and do on your own? <laughs> That's a tough question. I do get calls from the VA. Yeah. Uh, to to help them to partner with them the need uh, I, i'm not going to bash the va because i know a lot of people who feel it's their calling right to serve and so they serve at the va it, the problem is just so big the va and all these nonprofits we're all trying to do it together and it's still not enough it's still not enough the problem comes when uh, uh, a vet goes to the VA for help that they're suicidal and they say, come back in three months. Right. Right. I mean, he should, you, you know, uh, I train people, if, if someone's suicidal, they don't go out of your sight until they're in someone else's hands who knows more about this than you do. You know, you, you call the uh, 1-800-273-TALK. You dial 911. You call a buddy. Uh you never let them out of your sight. Well, those folks should know that. Right. Right. But over and over and over, you know, stories that they're told to go home, come back in three months, and, and the vet takes his life in the parking lot or at home. or And, and, and we want to partner with folks in Moore County and the surrounding counties uh, who believe in supporting and caring for, and it's worth it to do whatever it takes to support our veterans. Um, time is short, but I, I also want to ask you, how did you wind up in Select Moore County? 
uh, again, I, I I don't know that we chose Moore County. Moore County kind of chose you. Chose us. Okay. Uh, even when I was looking for a job and and COVID had caused. Uh, you know, everything to shut down and our, our nonprofit to shut down. I was looking for a job. Well, I found a job, but we didn't know all about Moore County and the veterans that are here and what happens here. Right. Like I said, I believe Moore County chose us. Okay. Um, if people want to reach you, um, your email is connect at warrior180.org. Uh, they can call you. It's an 866 number. Yes. 255-5180. And they should go to your website, um, www.warrior180.org. Yeah. If they have ideas, yep. a passion, yep, uh, uh, or share their story. And some people may want to get involved in the foundation to help. So That'd you're looking wonderful. for volunteers as yes, well. Yes, sir. Okay. Maybe... Um, you should come back on uh, down the road, and we should talk about where you are. Um, I love it. As you're growing your, um, uh, it's it's a ministry. Yes, sir. Um, and it grows in leaps and bounds some days and some weeks and others inches, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, I appreciate you coming in and talking with us. Thank um, you so much. And we'll stay in touch. That's be great. Thank All you. Right. Um, we're, this is All Things More County. We will um, be back after the break. Welcome back to our second set of All Things More County. Um, a few years ago, a couple years ago now, um, Vicki Stone, um, who is sitting two to my left, was on as a guest um, of the Village Design Group. Um, I did not realize that this year they're celebrating their 40th anniversary. Um, and to that end, uh, to my immediate left, Pam Hill, who was the founder of the business, is here as well. And you're still active. You yes, I am. You sold it, but you couldn't walk away. That's right. <laughs> you just said, I, I have too much going. I, I got to be here, right? I, Hands on. Just I just love my job. So being with... Uh, a group of women instead of just there by myself is is far more fun. So and you you sold your business to your new boss. Yes, I did. That looks like it's smartest going, thing I ever did. Looks like it's going pretty well, <laughs> actually. It is. Um, Vicky, are you from Moore County originally? No, I'm originally from Dallas, Texas. How'd you get here? Uh, well, I was uh, actually we, from Dallas, Texas. We moved to Pittsburgh. I went to school up there, got my master's degree. And then I was offered a position in Lexington, North Carolina, and we both, my husband and I both played a lot of golf, and so we came down here on weekends to play golf, and we realized, you know, we really like being down here. We just did not want to go home. So um, one morning we were down here, and there was an ad in the paper for Village Design Group uh, offering a position as an interior designer, and my husband kept aggravating me to... Uh, call and see if I could be employed, and so that's what happened, and we've been here ever since. What year was that? 2003. Okay, it mm -hmm. took four years <clears throat> until you, you bought the business. Right. But it wasn't always called the Village Design Group, was it? No, what it was, was it? not. Tell the, me. The original name was Pinehurst Interiors, and it was located in the theater building, which had just recently been remodeled and renovated completely, and okay. I was up on the second floor in 600 square feet, and I had several realtors. I lived in Fayetteville at the time. Mm -hmm. And there were several realtors who just kept really bugging me to bring a business, instead of working from Fayetteville, bring the business to Pinehurst. And sort of like Vicki did, you just give in after a while and say, hey, we're going to give this a try. So with the loving support of my husband and my family and um, friends, uh, I, I took this on and never looked back. So this was 1982? Yes. Oh, my. So 1982, um, this was a very sleepy community. Mm -hmm. um, those realtors must have been very persuasive because <laughs> it was uh, definitely a type B community. And you moved over here and... I, I would say that... New beginnings? Yeah, some of the... Um, 
some of the work I was doing was out at Foxfire then. Yeah. There was a, an owner then who was very progressive, um, and Country Club of North Carolina was right. Uh, moving right along. Right. Um, some of the other gated communities had not come Even, into being yet. That's right. Back in the 80s, when Foxfire came into being, People like me who lived in the Northeast, we would hear about it. We would get calls from salesmen. It was like the second coming of Jesus. <laughs> they were saying, oh, you know, golf courses were being built. They were in an expansive mode. Um, it never clicked. It never clicked the way they had expected it to. And the Pinehurst just got stronger and stronger and stronger. The center just got stronger. The, the resort areas that were being built and developed tangentially never got inside that circle. Another one would be Lake Surf. Mm -hmm. See, you would know Lake Surf. You ask people today about Lake Surf, they don't know that it's Wood Lake. Right. Re remember? Exactly. They had that, um, that lake with the wave machine. Mm -hmm. oh, guess where I bought my first piece of real estate? Wow. At Wood Lake. Lake. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was hot stuff. <laughs> Well, and its closer I, proximity to Raleigh is a little surprising that it hasn't it, right. uh, flourished a little more. I know they need to get the lake back up and running, but, so from and your, it will. From your vantage point in 1982 and your vantage point in 2007, you both witnessed a tremendous change in demographics, um, growth. Um, we've become a, a very hot market, a very in-demand area. People are moving here, and it's not just military. And you, you get all different types of people today compared to what it was like in the 90s. It was all retirees, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so how many times have you had to pivot in the last 20, not 20, but the last 14, 15 years? Well, um, I think when I came, the bulk of our business was furnishings, yep. I would say, you know, custom furnishings, window treatments, the interior of the home. And over time, it became, well, we need to remodel. The homes are getting a little bit more dated. We need to update bathrooms. So that kind of pushed us into tile selections, plumbing selections, things we weren't normally doing, per se. Um, and then we got into the cabinet business. We do full kitchens and bathrooms, and that, all that's happened probably over the last 10 years. That started as a partnership with another company, and they relocated, and we just kept doing the cabinet business. Um, Pam is an, uh, an excellent person to talk to about construction. She did, had a service called Construction Oversight. Mm -hmm. So if you're building a home and all the ins and outs of selections for that can get overwhelming and she she does the hand holding service we kind of call it mm -hmm. to to keep people on track and help the builders stay on track um, and I think that's a great service too and they've always offered that service right yeah the um and I did not realize you're also a licensed contractor yes sir so the services that you offer are wide they're not very narrow if you want to talk a little bit about them well, like I said, we do, uh, my background, it was in computer design, graphic design. So I really took to CAD programs um, and architectural programs like that. So right. that was my love of doing that. If somebody comes in and says, we want to take down some walls and see how this kitchen could look or how this whole house, I will draw that up in a snap and, and show them, you know, some options for that. They come into the office on a big screen and look at, a 3D rendering of how the space would look. And that, to me, is the one of the most important parts of our process because I don't want to start tearing out walls or tackling anything until everybody involved, the subcontractors, the homeowners, has a clear vision of what it's going to look like when it's finished. And with that technology, we can show them that. And sometimes, honestly, we have builders that come in and say, we just want you to draw up this blueprint of the house because we're afraid that homeowners aren't really seeing the vision of how it's going to be. It's hard to read a blueprint. Right. Pam excels at that. She can right. tell you every little nuance about a blueprint. But I think, you know, people expect to see a visual of how their spaces are going to look. And that's what we enjoy doing, too. And you're talking about new construction. You're uh, referencing or, or just a remodeling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. People are always asking. They want to change things. So one of the things I tell clients all the time, gee, if you don't like the layout of the home, in a normal market, move on because it's going to 
do do you agree with that or do you, no she doesn't look at her wincing at me <laughs> she doesn't agree she goes bill that's why i'm here that's right <laughs> sometimes we we look at homes with again in a balanced market and they're saying well if this room was a little more open or this room blah, 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 blah. and if they're on a budget they if the layout doesn't work it's it's hard for them to make that commitment because then they're coming out of pocket after their purchase mm -hmm. But when you get into a country club type setting, it's a different animal. I mean, you love the chat. She she's mm -hmm. ready. She's ready to fire at me. No. I can see it. Well, Go I ahead. was I, I was just going to elaborate that um, I have <laughs> been in homes where I did not see potential. <coughs> I'll be honest. <coughs> okay. Um, especially sort of what the client is describing to me. However, there are not many homes that don't have some hope That's right. and it it becomes a structural question as to whether you can remove walls and raise ceilings and things like that but most of the time it can be done yeah um you can take a, a 50s rancher and and update it tremendously yeah. um with new construction i i i'm blessed with a god-given talent of being able to look at two-dimensional and see it three-dimensionally that's what her computer does for her, which yep. is, I mean, it's astounding to me. The first time I saw it, it was like, whoa. I mean, she showed a staircase being put, added, and I just all kinds of things that were just right. mind-boggling. Right. Um, and to try to paint that picture for a client um, is far more difficult than now being able to do it. I don't know how to do it. She helps me, but um, we do it together. Uh, and. But again, back to the uh, construction oversight, yeah. um, there, there were quite a few builders that I have worked with over the years who have just found that an invaluable service. And again, like Vicki said, keeping the client on track because they want to jump ahead and he has a deadline on something else and we can keep them on track and help them through the, the plumbing, the electrical, the uh, flooring, lighting. Those are all and hopefully, and hopefully on budget. <laughs> yes, yes. We and hopefully try very on hard. budget. Yeah. Yes. Um, before we wrap up this set, COVID has set back builders, has set back a lot, the supply chain. Um, has it affected your your business? The, I mean, you're on the other side of it right now. Do you see a difference between last year and this year? Or are people remodeling a lot yeah because of COVID. Say we may be busier right yeah I now think, the supply I think, chain part of it is difficult yeah. because we don't have control of that necessarily right um and it's frustrating to hear the furniture industry have mm -hmm. such lengthy delays because of components that might be coming from china or just oh. are being sought after so so much that it we get delays people but spend a lot they, more people time came in, their in homes. i mean we had if they made appointments, we welcomed them in all through COVID. Good for you. Mm -hmm. We're going to come back in the uh, third set. We're speaking all about the uh, 40th anniversary of the Village Design Group um, with Vicki Stone, current owner, and Pam Hill, the founder uh, and interior designer. This is All Things Moore County. Welcome back to our third and final set of All Things Moore County. Um, we're talking with the uh, Village Design Group. They're celebrating their 40th year in business um, with two owners, Pam Hill, the original founder, and Vicki Stone, who has owned it since 2007. Um, I, at the top, I need to know, so it's your anniversary year. What are you doing? Um, uh, I'm hoping something where people can, redis can discover or rediscover um, what Village Design Group is all about. We are. We're planning a uh, kind of a cocktail party celebration event on Thursday the 31st. And we've invited um, a lot of our clientele to come, some of our sales reps that have been with us for many years, uh, and subcontractors and local vendors. We, we pride ourselves in working with local 
factories, uh, manufacturers, and other subcontractors and vendors as much as we possibly can. So that night will be kind of just a little get together and we'll have cake and wine and some goodie bags and things like that for everybody. And then Friday is actually an, the anniversary of Pinehurst Interiors. And um, so we're going to spend that day just kind of a come and go and ask people to come in any time of the day, have some cake with us and look around. And if they haven't been in before, then they can see what all we have to offer. It's a 12,000 square foot showroom. People don't realize how large that building is. You're and right. The, I didn't realize it was there that large. There are thousands of fabrics, wallpaper books, carpet, flooring, everything thing you need for the inside for, of the house. for people who don't know you're located to the left of um, Zaxby's Zaxby's uh-huh. yeah so it's very visible on 15501 yep yep right. um okay so one of the things I, I I can tell you is there's a subculture in Moore County where people come in and they buy older homes they want to bring them up to speed they want to bring them up to current conditions um not unlike the home you owned, Mm -hmm. you did exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um, So when you have a passion, it doesn't go away. You just keep doing it. You probably probably have three more in your future. Or five in my past. Okay. (laughs) Um, So remodeling is a big part of your business. Somebody who comes in and buys an older home, and they want to bring it up to... to, There's so much demand, um, and there's so many homes of different character in Southern Pines and Pinehurst. Um, now we're not talking about gated communities per se. We're talking about you know village type homes. Um, and that's a big part of your business. Absolutely. And it's soup to nuts services, pretty much, isn't it, with your contractor team? That's right. We we work with um, we have our own teams basically of subcontractors to do just about anything that needs to be done. We review our design plans with our subs before the work starts. We manage the job. We check on the job. Uh, If the client doesn't live here, we set up um, an electronic system so we can communicate with them and send photos as the job progresses. So a lot of our clients are out of town. They have second homes here that they're updating. How do you combat the problem? I hear from so many of my friends. They can't get contractors to show up. For work or they they just people are so busy we know about the supply chain but um, I hear it from a lot of friends of mine they just aren't happy with the response that they get but you have your own team of contractors that are loyal to you yes and and they don't they don't want to have to go look for work they don't have to jump around from job to job and everything they've gotten used to working with our specific designers we plan out the job they don't have to work with the client directly they just know what their tasks are to go in and they just like that part of um you know the association with us so they stay loyal to us and we stay loyal to them so when you um set this up for me you get a phone call from someone who lives in let's say a vintage part of southern pines or pinehurst they want you to come out for an initial consultation how how does that look what does that consultation look like is that how you you do it um it's a it's a look and listen sort of uh, approach yeah um we we have to see the job in order to right. follow what it is that they're discussing with us, but we have to listen very carefully and right. ask questions um, that sometimes can sound sort of personal, but it's lifestyle questions because we want to make sure that we can that the end result is what they really want. I mean, it is their house, and that's our goal, um, and that's part of the fun of it is because there are so many different ways that you can do things, um, not just one. Right. So, you know, it's it's not a cookie-cutter approach by any means. It's definitely custom. Right. And uh, the recommendations, sometimes the, the spark or the light bulb turns on a day or two later. Um, uh, not, I don't like to be pushed into a decision within five minutes of walking in the front door. Um, yep. Uh, I... I I get an inspiration that that then I, I'm glad to share with them on our next visit, and we kind of take it from there. Yeah. Sometimes people will ask impatient questions mm-hmm. and, and not be able to um, not give you the information that you need to give them a complete plan of what they said they wanted. Right. Um, how many times does it do you go through the process before 
um, you find out from them what their budget is because that helps will help you a lot, right? It, in, as opposed to just keep going and going. Why are you laughing? <laughs> She's laughing because that's the it, hardest question for anybody to answer is what their budget is, right. and that really is helpful. I know you don't want to give out that information, or it seems very personal, but but it's helpful as far as making selections. It doesn't even matter if it's a sofa or wallpaper. If we know your budget, we're not going to show you things that that aren't applicable to that budget. So it's an important thing to discuss, and we do need that information. Yeah, and um, sometimes people will make you, do you ever go through the process of drawing up plans and this and that, and then you, you price it out, and they go, Whoa, oh my gosh, what? And then you go, I should, you just have to be firm yeah. and, and straightforward, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to start off on a professional footing, and right. you, you almost have to do that that first day. Yeah. So that, you know, they they aren't, um, yeah. we're not meeting at a, at a fork in the road and going in different directions. We want to make sure that we're uh, going along the same route. I bet you she's a really good reader of people. Just a bet. Just a wild guess. She's right? amazing, yes. And in 10 <laughs> minutes, she will know, um, right? Because you, 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 you'll get to understand people's motivations. Yes. And that's, you have to do that mm -hmm. before you can proceed. Otherwise, right. you're just spinning your wheels. Right. Exactly. You're good at it, aren't you? Mm -hmm. She knows she's good at it too. I can, <laughs> she I can. had a lot of years of practice. <laughs> huh? I've had a lot of years of practice. Well, sometimes people don't always say what they mean, mm -hmm. and and it's the rare bird that does, and if that creates a good symmetry, if you can connect that way mm -hmm. very quickly, mm -hmm. um, when people ask you to, because I, I can can I can say that the value of your work is a huge, big step in the process of completing a project. But sometimes people will always nickel and dime, and they'll want to know how you defend the value of what it is you do, the services you provide, because they're instrumental. How do you deal, how do you deal with that? Oh, you just come in, and you're like, the, you're the good police and bad police? No, come on. You just, because sometimes We're, people get sticker shock, yeah. and you have to break it down for them. And um, we have that in, in our business. And you got to have a big picture view. You don't know. What do you want to... She's not sure which angle she wants to come at me with now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to throw it to Vicki. <laughs> <laughs> um, with new construction, yeah. I had kind of come up with a formula Okay. Um, that if their house... And they knew how much the house was going to cost because they had talked with the builder. Right. And gotten a contract before they usually are seeing me. Right. And I would tell them that it should be a certain percentage of the price of the house, not the land, but the house. Right. And they, you could see the wheels turning, particularly in the man's head, and he would be coming up with that number. And he would either nod that that was good. Right. Or he would start kind of backpedaling. Right. Um, in most cases, that number was really pretty true. Um, it's, we're, we're, we, we try to paint the picture that we're on the same team. We all have the same goal in mind and we don't want the monies to ever be the stumbling block. So we try to work around it. If, if one thing ends up being a little out of kilter, mm -hmm. then, you know, maybe we pull back over here and do something a little differently. Right. Um, it's okay. and we, we can usually make that make that work I um you you also do a lot of commercial work as well not just residential I mean and even on your website you've done work at Pine Needles uh St. Joseph of the Pines um Bell Mead um quite a few in Pre the Pinehurst Resort Forest Creek uh Pinehurst number no. nine the Moore County Airport Terminal yep really we remodeled the terminal a few years ago yeah did you really uh -huh. Okay. That was a fun project. Seven Lakes Golf Club. Mm -hmm. um, lots of restaurants, offices. So it's not just residential that you do. Right. Um, and that, that's light commercial in the yep. grand scheme of design. Yep. Um, uh, so, you know, office buildings and, and, and public places like that, it's not a big corporation. So that's a different kind of uh, yeah. space design than... Are you getting a lot of requests for um, home environments where um, 
today so many people can work mobily from their home um, to r design office space within a home and change the existing layout. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's sure. a, becoming a big part of the business. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a big draw to the area is it's people a, who can work from home. That's right. And they, oh. that's right. So they want their home environment to mimic, they have their home and have their office all under one roof. Right. Um, your website, let's get that information out and, and your, your contact information. It's just villagedesigngroup.com. Perfect. It's intuitive. Good. Yep. We, well, it's kind of long. <laughs> Villagedesigngroup.com. Dot com, right. Perfect. Uh -huh. Okay. And we're located in the big red brick building uh, next to Zaxby's. Like we said, it has a yep. lighted sign out front that says home center and yep. we we view it as a home center, so everything you need for your inside of your home is available. We have friendly people there. You just walk in, we'll set you up a table, and you can dig around through everything. Or if you get stumped, you just ask one of our designers, and they'll be glad to help you. Well, congratulations on uh, 40 years, which is, I can see, a group effort. And um, uh, I wish nothing but the best. Thank you for introducing me to uh, Jeff Hastings this morning. That's an organization that you support yes, sir. Uh, as part of the community. Mm -hmm. um, Pam, it was a pleasure. Thank you, Bill. Really a pleasure. Vicki, yeah. always a pleasure. Um, Village Design Group, um, for a lot of your home and commercial needs as well, um, you've got quite a group of people there. That 12,000 square feet, I had no idea. Yeah. Um, thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Thanks um, for listening. This is All Things Moore County. <laughs>